Today we're going to be talking about how to find the Jacobian of the transformation. And in this particular problem, we've been given the equations x equals u divided by v, y equals v divided by w, and z equals w divided by u. And we've been asked to find the Jacobian of the transformation. Now, in order to do so, all we need to do is take the partial derivative of the equation defined by x, y, and z in terms of u, v, and w. So we have three variables defined by three other variables. Notice that our equation for x is defined in terms of u and v, y in terms of v and w, and z in terms of w and u. So we need to take the partial derivative of the equation x, y, z in terms of u, v, w. So that's three variables in terms of three other variables, and that's why I've written three by three up here because we have three variables in terms of three others. If you're struggling with a Jacobian of the transformation problem where you have two variables defined in terms of two others, in other words, a two by two, I have a video about that as well that you can watch. But in this problem, we have three by three. And when we have that, what we're going to do is take the partial derivatives of all three x, y, and z in terms of the three others, u, v, and w, and then we're going to plug them into the matrix that we have here. And this is a formula that tells us how to evaluate this matrix, although we don't really need it. I'll show you how to derive it from this matrix here. So the first thing is to take the partial derivatives of x, y, and z in terms of u, v, and w one at a time. So the partial derivative of x with respect to u, notice that x is equal to u over v. Well, if we're taking the partial derivative with respect to u, that means we're going to be treating v as a constant. So the derivative of u over v is just going to be 1 over v because you can essentially think about this equation for x as x equals 1 over v times u. And that 1 over v is just a coefficient on the u variable here since v is a constant. So that's our partial derivative there. When we take the partial derivative of x with respect to v, we'll treat v as our variable and u as a constant. And in this case, what we'll get is negative u over v squared. I won't go into a lot of detail about partial derivatives because I have lots of other videos about how to take partial derivatives. If you take the partial derivative of x with respect to w, notice that there is no w in our x equation. That means the derivative is just going to be 0. Because essentially, remember, when you're taking the partial derivative with respect to w, you're of course treating u and v as constants. And so u divided by v would also be a constant, and the derivative of any constant is just 0. Now if we take the partial derivatives of y with respect to u, v, and w, with respect to u, there is no u in our equation here, so our partial derivative will be 0. Partial derivative of y with respect to v will give us 1 over w, same as this partial derivative of x with respect to u, same thought process there. And then the partial derivative of y with respect to w here, same thing as partial derivative of x with respect to v, will get negative v over w squared. Now the partial derivatives of z with respect to u, again here we'll get negative w over u squared. Partial derivative of z with respect to v will get 0 because there is no v involved in our z equation. And then partial derivative of z with respect to w will just get 1 over u. So those are our partial derivatives. Now we want to go ahead and plug them into their spots in this matrix here. That's easy enough, we can do that. We can just take partial derivative of x with respect to u, which is 1 over v, and plug in 1 over v right here. Then take partial derivative of x with respect to v, which is negative u over v squared, and plug it in right here, and we can write out this matrix. But once we do, in order to evaluate this matrix, what we're going to do is take the first term, the partial derivative of x with respect to u, and the reason we're using that one is because it's in the upper left-hand corner, so we'll take that one and we'll multiply it by the 2 by 2 matrix, which is outside of its row and column. So what I mean by that is we take the partial derivative of x with respect to u, ignore everything that's in its own column and everything that's in its own row. And what we're left with here is this, the this 2 by 2 matrix here. And that's what we're going to multiply by the partial derivative of x with respect to u. So you'll notice that this matrix is translated here. 
then according to our formula we're going to subtract and we're going to take the second term here in the first row, the partial derivative of x with respect to v. We're going to ignore everything in its own row and everything in its own column and what we're left with are these two terms here and these two terms here and those will form our matrix which will multiply by partial derivative of x with respect to v. And then we'll do the same thing for partial derivative of x with respect to w, grabbing the matrix that is outside of its own row and column, which would be this one here. So that's how we can break down a 3 by 3 matrix into 2 by 2 matrices. Now when we do that, we can easily, more easily, plug in the partial derivatives that we found. So partial derivative of x with respect to u is going to be 1 over v. We could multiply that by this matrix here. But if you have any familiarity with 2 by 2 matrices, you know that in order to evaluate a 2 by 2 matrix, all you do is multiply the term here in the upper left by the term in the bottom right, and then subtract the multiplication of the other two. So we're going to take partial derivative of y with respect to v, which we'll find right here in the middle, that's 1 over w, and we're going to multiply that by partial derivative of z with respect to w, which is 1 over u, so multiplied by 1 over u. And then we're going to subtract partial derivative of z with respect to v, which we know is 0, times partial derivative of y with respect to w, which is negative v over w squared. So in other words, we're multiplying these two together, and then we're subtracting whatever we get when we multiply these two together, and that's how you evaluate a 2 by 2 matrix. So then you'll see that we'll subtract here according to our formula, the partial derivative of x with respect to v, which we know is negative u over v squared. So we'll cancel that negative term here, make this a positive, and say u over v squared. Then we'll multiply partial derivative of y with respect to u, which we know is 0, by partial derivative of z with respect to w, which is 1 over u, so 1 over u. That takes care of these two. Then we'll subtract partial derivative of z with respect to u, which is this negative w over u squared. So we'll cancel out that negative and get w over u squared, multiplied by partial derivative of y with respect to w, which we know here is negative v over w squared, so negative v over w squared, and then that'll take care of these two. According to our formula, we'll subtract here partial derivative of x with respect to w, which we know is 0, and then we could evaluate this matrix, but we don't need to because we know anything inside here is going to be multiplied by 0. This whole thing's going to go away. This is going to cancel. So what we're left with is this here, and we can just evaluate. So notice for our first term here, we're going to have 1 over v times 1 over w times 1 over u. So that's going to give us 1 over u v w. We have this 0 multiplied by the second term, so that's all going to go away. We don't need to include it. Here in our second term, this is multiplied by 0, so we don't need to look at that. Notice that we have a positive term, a positive term, and then this negative v over w squared, so we'll get that minus there. And then on the top, we have u, v, and w, so we'll get u, v, w, divided by u squared, v squared, and w squared, so we'll get u squared, v squared, and w squared. Well, we can cancel a u v w from both the numerator and denominator of this second term. What we get here is 1 over u v w, and then from the second term, we'll get it to cancel from the numerator, so we'll get 1. And in the denominator, this simplifies essentially to u v w squared, and since we canceled one from the numerator, we'll cancel one from the denominator and just be left with u v w. 1 over uvw minus 1 over uvw is going to give us 0, and so 0 is our final answer. That's the Jacobian of the transformation given these three equations here plugged into a 3 by 3 matrix. So I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, like this video down below and subscribe to be notified of future videos.